everybody um, around the world and welcome to uh, Cat Mantra on the Couch with Dave Barbarossa. I'm going to be asking Dave a few questions, um, some that he's been asked several times already today, but uh, Dave, uh, really yes. glad to be with you, mate. Really nice. And uh, yeah, um, well, first of all, yes, I'd just like to ask you about the early days and um, yeah. you know, the punk era for you. Um, okay. Um, what was it like? What was? How did you get into the ants? Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's well, go. Um, the punk era was uh, sort of the tail end of a really grey uh, time in in England, in Britain with Thatcher. It was uh, huge unemployment and and riots and strife. Mm -hmm. It was very dark and grey. And um, for people like me who weren't educated or didn't have a particularly great outlook in their young lives, you know, sixteen, seventeen. Punk rock came a, came across as something that knocked walls down and provided uh, an outlet artistically for okay. for people like me and you know the right. disaffected. Yeah, the disaffected. Mm -hmm. And um, so, how did the ant start for you? Um, my friend, a guy I used to hang around with, a guy called Mark uh, Gomon, He changed his name to, but his name was Mark Ryan. His mum was a nurse. His dad, I think, was a lecturer. When I was a uh, homeless for one reason or another I stayed at his house and I remember I snored a lot and he threw a huge book at me <laughs> and, but that's a real old memory but anyway he was he joined a punk rock band he was into Bob Dylan and, and right. Rambo and <coughs> Kerouac he was a real pioneer of an art pioneer and he joined a band he told us about it but I didn't it didn't register and it was it was the ants you know okay and uh, and then I had some drums in my room. I loved the drums. I wanted to be a drummer when I grew up, etc. And um, he called me and said that the Adams drummer, right, or the Ants drummer as it was, had his girlfriend had a car accident, or he'd had a car. I can't remember. It's lost in the of time. And said, "Could you stand in?" And I said, "Well, I've never played live. I don't know anything about this music. What is it? Is it punk rock?" I thought, "Oh no, stabbings, swearing on telly, gobbing, you know, and all the rest yeah. of it." So I said yes. So this was, was this after the pistols had hit? I'd imagine so. Yeah, right, yeah. I wasn't really aware of the like okay. the guys. So I didn't have a telly yeah. and, and all the rest of okay. it. And so um, a knock on the door. My kit packed up, and it was Adam and Jordan looking like Martians. I mean, cool, right, un I mean, unbelievable. Seen some sight. pictures of that, yeah. obviously. And people did not look like that. Then. And you were what seventeen at the time? Yeah, then? seventeen, eighteen, and um, we went to Chelmsford. I think, or Cheltenham, I think it's Chelmsford. And we opened for the Slits, and right, uh, yeah. we did this show, and Adam said, look, you know, I, I want you in the band, and, and that was it. Great, great. And, um, and now I'm playing for you. Yes! <laughs> honoured, absolutely honoured, mate, absolutely honoured. <laughs> Can't believe it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, to the trolls who said it wasn't my car on my last record, this is Dave Barbarossa, not CGI. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, so Dave, um, yeah, so you did a lot of gigs with the Ants, and did, when did you get signed to do it? I don't know. Right? <laughs> yeah, but this is. Um, I'm not very good at few dance, years ago. But we did get signed. Yeah, I know. you got signed to do it. Yeah. And, and Decca. Is that, is yeah, that Decca, there's. 77, Decca, wasn't it? Was that, so that was pre Dave? 78. Young okay. Parisians. Yeah, yeah there's going to be right. lots of people. Correcting so the, Jubilee, the Jubilee, Jubilee album. Jubilee. Jubilee. Was that on Decca? <laughs> I think it was on Decca. Yeah. It was. Um, Just going around to Rich. Uh, well, yeah. Camera one. Yeah. It was. Uh, Doja Girls was the single, wasn't it? That yeah. they released off I know that. The original one on it. Yeah. I know we, me and Adam did uh, the Toyers tracks on that album. No, on five, Jubilee. 95, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love that yeah. track, actually. That should have and been. And there was another track called Mice in Freefall. Yeah. Now, this is really not politically correct, but. Ralph Harris had this thing called a styrofoam. Oh, yeah, yeah styrofoam. Yeah. yeah, and Adam, because Adam was very futuristic, and he, you know, very into science. He appreciated right? the tech, and he could see. And even now, now we've got phones that do it. You know, I mean, without us knowing it, he thought if I put this on my forearm and strap it up, Dave, and play, it look fucking. Amazing. So Adam played and the styrofoam. So, so on he his played arm. the styrofoam on his arm. <laughs> was that it called that Mice in freefall. Yeah. Yeah. Blimey, yeah, I think absolutely. that might be news to uh, quite a few Ant fans out there. Uh, well, so Mickey Mo's studio, uh, Rack, we did it, I think, in Swiss Cottage. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so... Tell your grandchildren, isn't it? How long did this era 
a vigilante era last? I had no idea. Okay. And then uh, what I want to uh, come on to, because yes. um, we've only got half an hour, folks, so I'm sure people want to hear a lot more about Dirk era. Mm. Oh, yeah, I w what I will ask you is, mm. have you got a favourite track from your aunt era? Because, uh, I mean, I mentioned Xerox is mine, uh, as opposed to anything on God, no, on I mean, it's like saying your favourite children. No, I don't. We did, did a song called It Doesn't Matter ever come out? Yeah. 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 Well, I... Well, we, we, did on, yeah. we was on the yeah. Peel sessions. Oh yeah, we did a couple of those, didn't we? Yeah, I've got that on, yeah. on cassette. Not yeah, a C30, yeah. C60 or C90. Hey. Yeah, man. You got it. You got it. In there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, awesome. that is, so it doesn't matter. You can. Actually well, I remember it because it, it was really bluesy, right, and yeah. that's the thing with Adam that not a lot of people, not a lot of people know. Is he a huge American blues fan? Okay. Very early uh, blues uh, from the 40s and the 50s. He knew wow. everything about blues music. So a lot, and he was a bass player. So a lot of yeah. the early, um, I can't even think of the tracks anymore. But I know it doesn't matter. It's re got a really heavy uh, Delta blues feel, you know, Mississippi blues feel to it. Okay. As you, you know, um, if you yeah. think about it, yeah. Any interest to anyone? But well, yeah, it I'm was sure a huge, sure huge is, yeah. blues aficionado. Yeah, Adam. <coughs> wow, wow. There you go. <coughs> so, uh, so yeah. So here we are, and then um, Adam hires mm. Malcolm McLaren mm -hmm. as manager, which everyone mm. knows. Mm. Pays him apparently a thousand pound to be manager for a month. Right. Uh, That's right, man. Which was a lot of money in seventy nine <laughs> yeah, sure, or whatever. Sure. And um, uh, uh, Malcolm brings along this idea of the Burundi beat. Right, uh, and then he steals the ants. So, yes, he steals the ants. <laughs> that, like that's so that's many cushions. <laughs> <laughs> not, not not human beings. That's, that's, that's how it was put um, <laughs> to me from um, from Marco's perspective. But uh, I mean, you know, obviously this is a bit. But we're, we're, we're people. We're not, this is we're not ants. Subject, we're people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> We have our own <laughs> free will. We do what we like. That's right. You don't have four walk around carrying four. leaves and yeah. them. Yeah. So, so how how did this go? Well, what happened was, um, yeah, of course. Um, I think it, I think it was Adam hiring Malcolm to produce a video. Okay. That's what I think it was. I can't remember the songs at the time. Uh, Malcolm came down. I can remember that we were meeting Malcolm McLaren. Oh, we were all, all four of us were all like absolutely. And then, at, uh, then uh, I think Malcolm. You see, you got to remember that Adam Ant is a is a bit of a genius. He created his own image, his own personality that's yeah. endured to twenty seventeen. Created his own People genre. People all over the world still go and see him twenty seventeen because he's Adam Ant. He is the, the the person he designed. He is the artist. So when you have someone like Malcolm McLaren who designs artists, right. and Adam Ant, he can't who hold is Adam. One, there's nothing you can do for Adam Ant. Adam's already on his journey to stardom. Right. But with three feckless pillocks like me, Lee and Math, there was something malleable there, something he could mould and turn into. Okay. And also, we were open to that, because when you play for Adam, you are a pro, you are um, there on time, you do his bidding, you do it 100%, you, you know, you're a professional man. But with Malcolm McLaren, he gave us our own free reign to make the music we want to make. Right, yeah. He said, you're not soldiers, you know, you're not, um, what did you say at the start of the interview? Ants. Yeah, you know, Pioneers. stolen ants. You are right, yeah. individuals with your own artistic okay. and creativity in your own right. And that's what Malcolm set free. So it's not a great crime. No, no, Adam no, no. went on to be a multi-millionaire and I'm, yeah. I'm a potless drummer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think potless is... Quite, I'm not, quite not right, quite but, uh, but um, so it all, all's fair in love and war, and we made yeah. music, and he made music. And yeah, I mean, uh, and, I, I, and I've played for Adam many times over the years since. So yeah, I want to go on to the, the yeah. recent tour soon, but uh, I mean, I want to talk. About, I mean, I don't know how, how many people here uh, agree, but uh, I, I I was too young for punk, yeah. and I said to you, so I, I discovered really Bow Wow Wow. wow. Yeah. Separately and got into Bow Wow Wow before sure. I even knew from the early you know. Oh, yeah. but, uh, but there was something about the tribal beat, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, and something about Annabella, who was who was two years older than me, so mm. it was okay to have a crush on her when I was thirteen. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, um, so Bow Wow Wow happened. You had two top ten hits mm. with um, Go Out in the Country mm. and I Want Candy, and, mm -hmm. and you were on on the road 
and, and recorded yeah, a lot, tour a in lot the Bow Wow Wow for like three years. Very good live band, and we, we toured over, all over the world, and, we all, and then everyone got ill and jaded. And yeah, I think I heard... Um, I, 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 did you hear, Cat? No, doing some, some of my recent research, uh-huh. there was an Annabella interview where uh, you'd had to cancel American tour because yes. Matthew broke his hand. He broke his, he broke his forearm, he fell off a stage oh, in New right. Jersey, right. Yeah. and uh, when he was taken to the hospital to have it fixed, they diagnosed he had um, diabetes, and he was about three or four weeks from going blind. Blimey! Yeah. I, see, I can remember, because I always used to share a room with Matt, the enduring memory of those tours with Bow around the States is the sound of the drinks machine in the... Who's ever been to America? You know, there was a drinks machine in the um, passage outside, yeah. and when you put the, the dough in, it clonks. clonks <laughs> like that. And I can remember hearing this night after night, and of course it was Matthew going out and drinking and drinking, and he used to love swimming in the pools in Los Angeles, drinking the water, drinking, and then that's because he was suffering from diabetes. We know no one ever fucking Blimey. Know. Sugar hit. Yeah, and he was just like, yeah, he was in a real state, poor son. Cool, mm. blimey, and uh, a good friend of yours, and uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't touched obviously on Matthew too much, but I think uh, Dan Raven is going to ask. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, about, uh, yeah, I just wanted to know uh, what Matthew was like as a person. Was he was he a good musician? Well, I know well, he was a fantastic people. musician. Yeah. Uh, it was, was, he, a, was he a laugh to be with? He was a laugh, but he was a very driven and a very dark and smouldering and chippy, and we, which is, was his motivation to make music and to be the person he was. He's a very unique player. Yeah. He's a brilliant guy with a great brain, very humorous, loves science fiction. Great. Uh, and sci-fi man. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, a sad loss. Because yeah, he loved absolutely. the modern world, you know, and everything about it. But he never lived to see a mobile phone or a digital phone. No, of course so, not, man. Uh, God, you bless go. God, God bless you. God bless you, man. So, um, before I move on to post Bow Wow Wow, and... Uh, but obviously, yeah. There was mm. so there was th- this kind of three full-on years, yeah, yeah. and then talk, and then uh, yeah. Matthew broke his arm. And, mm-hmm. and uh, according to the interview that I watched, uh, by this time you'd already parted company with Malcolm. Yeah, I think I think the last sort of six months, eight months, we weren't with Malcolm anymore. Correct. Yeah. And was that what was the reason that he, he got bored with us? And I really? guess we we became <coughs> like a quite a uh, efficient touring outfit you know and he wanted to invent his ma- next yeah, thing yeah bored of it he's done that yeah well, whatever it was yeah whatever the thing he wants to do next he's off yeah right okay yeah. And, and and you had plans for, to, for recording an album at this point i don't i don't know if it got done we did have an, an album on our own called uh, when the going gets tough yeah. tough get going yeah. yeah so this was done after after matthew broke his arm, and after matthew broke, broke his arm i think you got back together in london for that perhaps no it would have been, oh, no yeah, it's a I long time ago, folks, in, in, not in a galaxy far, far that's away. A, that's an interesting question. I, I'm sure we would have done it before that tour. Maybe there was some, some of it down, not complete, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I get confused at the recording sessions, yeah. you know. But around that time. Yeah, around that time, definitely, yeah. 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 But yeah, the, uh, the, two, the, the, the two big hits uh, I just bought, I've still got one with vinyl. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's, um, let's start, throw it out for uh, some questions. From the specially invited guests, who wants hands up? Richard. Richard. So, uh, out of the first uh, album that you recorded with Adam, yeah, Turquoise White Socks, or the first album with Bow Wow, yeah, with the C thirty C sixty and all that yeah. stuff on, which which of those albums is your favourite, and what do you remember about recording them? What you know, any memories? Um, I know that that recording Dirk was quite angst because. Adam fell out with Andy, the bass player, and it, and it was quite a tough record to do. And also, we had this mad—I don't know why he got this fucking producer in, this cocaine freak American bloke that just didn't get us. But uh, you know, Adam, he put he puts the uh, uh, what's it, Young Parisians out instead of Lady, Lady. Lady or something. You know, yeah, he's, they he's, love Lady. He's a capricious he's guy, Lady. you know. Yeah. Although a genius, you know, he, he goes his own way. So I can remember that being like. Not the fun it should have because of the there was the cohesion had gone within the unit that had got the band to that level. Yeah, uh, yeah it sounds so good. Yeah, what well, a great art! Well, great art comes out of struggle. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the Bow Wow Wow that one. Where the fuck did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember it being easier? And 
less. Bow Wow Wow was a very easy band to play for because I just right. sat there, showed off. <laughs> um, but but the but the bass player Lee Gorman was was a bit like Adam in the fact that he was he demanded excellence. Right. They both their standards were very high. You know, Adam was a writer and, a, and the, the concept had to be immaculate mm -hmm. and faultless. And Lee, as a technician, fantastic. So I had to, you know, be in league with him. So, yeah, that was a good album. I just can't remember where that bloody was recorded, though. It's really got me. <laughs> All of that drumming, and I can't remember. <laughs> That's right. As we said a long time ago. Long time ago. Well, I can remember recording Dirt Wears White Socks, but I can't remember <coughs> recording um, that cassette pack. Or well, maybe uh, well, Dirk stands in, you, in my more because it was a stressful experience well, and you remember. Well, the thing with, 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 that, with the Ant sound on Dirk Wears White Socks, it's much easier to record. It's a much more classical yeah. sound, you know. It's, it's a, a rock band or whatever, a punk rock band, playing at a, a regular tempo, there's air in it, and there's their arrangements. Whereas <coughs> Bow Wow was very hard to record. We never recorded well. Hmm. Never really made a good record because... Everything was so fast and the frequencies all, all in the middle. We had the timbales, had the rhythm guitar, you had Lee right up the neck. It was all squashed into those uh, middle frequencies. So we never got any clarity or swing in it. But live, we, we really were good. So there you go. Some technically boring information. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Tony? Oh, Jesse's got his hand. Tony, go on, ladies first. Uh, what is your most favourite memory of being involved with the Ants? I think Leaving. it is <laughs> it is Tony those moments in that incarnation of the ants I remember where I used to go on with the two other lads we used to play the intro to a track I can't remember the big opening tracks like Nietzsche Baby mm. it was one and I don't remember but another track and we'd start and we knew that I knew that Adam was in the dressing room just waiting and it was playing and watching all of those faces. Right. And then seeing their eyes light up as Adam just appeared behind them. Oh, oh cool. So the sort of uh, entrance and the beginning of the show Magical. and the expectation. Mm. Yeah. There you go, Tony. Cool. Uh, Jess? Uh, Malcolm brought this idea of the Burundi beat. Mm -hmm. And which Bow Wow Wow took on. And of mm. course, Adam, Adam and the Ants. Yes. I, I mean, what, 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 what were your know. thoughts? What do you think? Oh, <laughs> I'm not Miss Marvel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You tell me. I mean, I mean how, how was your view of that, of your experience at the time? Well, I was having such a laugh in, in Bow Wow Wow. I mean, it was completely different to Adam, which is much more like you're a soldier in a, in a war. Adam would talk things in, in military ways and strategies, and we're soldiers in a war, you know. It was quite grim. It felt like they were at war, actually, you know, when I came you out. Know, uh, whereas Bow Wow, it was like, no, I'm just fucked up and play, come on, you know. They're the two, my angel and the devil on my shoulder all my life. You know, one really disciplined, regimented, you know what I mean, straight Adam through the front door, no fucking about. Malcolm, just let it all go, go wild, just fall back into things. They're two great geniuses in my life. Oh, there you go. That the Burundi beat, it did start with, like, <coughs> with the uh, with the Adam Ants, you released the Adam Ants EP and Kick started to have the Burundi beat, didn't it, behind it, and that was obviously before Bow Wow, so perhaps, perhaps Malcolm heard that and thought, you know, this, this, is, this is good, we could Well, I this. just think, it, I, yeah, I mean, Adam was brilliant as well, Adam would write everything in the Ants, except the drums, and he would say, that's your department, Dave, and that, so he trusted me with that. And having grown up not in a traditional rock background, growing up in Hackney, there was a lot of soul and reggae. And also my dad was a huge Latin American fan, and so that seeped into my childhood, along with the sort of T-Rex and, you know, Bowie and all that. Rock and rock. I suppose with, with in the Ants, I had that... Um, Adam's told me this many times, I had that slightly different feel from the other guys, which, yeah. which gave the music that... Well, that's why he must have had that much respect for you, that he let you do your own thing. Because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, he's such a controlling person that he wouldn't do that, would he? No, no, he's always good to me. Yeah, Always, always a good bloke to me. I can't complain. Fantastic. Cool. So, uh, you've had your question. I don't know if you've got anything else you want to ask, but... Uh, well, just what's your favourite track off the Dirk album? I don't, I don't, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I, keep, I mean, I did this, we did this um, show a few years ago 
because Adam said that we've never <coughs> done it live. We've never done the whole album live. That's I was going to come on to that next. You oh, were sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ed Edit it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no edit, but that will yeah. build into the questions. That will build into the question. Well, not the question really, but yeah. So, I mean, obviously, uh, many years hence, yeah. and you've done a lot of session work, a lot of touring. Mm -hmm. Including with Republica mm -hmm. in the in the uh, early nineties or, or in the nineties was it? Yep, nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then and then we came to well, obviously, thank God bless Adam getting well again and mm -hmm. uh, getting working again, mm -hmm. and which came on to the Dirk tour. And um, mm -hmm. I did a tour with uh, Adam and Marco in the States in the nineties as I'd, well. It wasn't Persuasion, was it? I don't know what it's called, mate. It just will okay. be on, will be off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we did that, and it was with Dave Ruff, David Ruffy, you know, from the Ruffs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Many people out yeah. there, they tell me that. Yeah, we, me and Dave were the two drummers on that American tour. We did some, we oh, did right. um, um, uh, Hammersmith Apollo three nights or something like that. Yeah, that was a great tour. But but Adam and Marco got in on that, and it got. Off, but you know that was good. We did all over America and stuff. That was a really good one. That was wonderful. Yeah, was wonderful. Nice. Ah, wonderful. there you go. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that did that. And then uh, and then like the one you're talking about, the Dirk wears white socks. He just called me and said, "Look, we've got to do it. It's the fiftieth, or fortieth, or thirtieth anniversary of this album. We've what? never done it live. You've got to do it." And I said, "Oh yeah, of course. I'd love to do it." And so we got together and we started rehearsing it, and we both laughed because it was so absurdly difficult to do. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how we managed, to, but who, yeah, it was. We did some regional shows, and then we did a London Hammersmith Odeon. Odeon yeah, Hammersmith Odeon. Why? You, you'll know. <laughs> it was a big, big show in Hammersmith, anyway. Apollo. No, no, the Shepherd's Bush Empire. Empire was the wonderful one. The Hammersmith Apollo was the Dirk wears white socks. There you go. Um, yeah, and that was brilliant to do those songs again. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Because I'd done a lot of them live, but not all of them live. We haven't right. done them before. So we tried to do live um, live off dirt. Animals and Men. Right, yeah. That's my favourite. Yeah. Well, we, 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 neither of us could do it. We, <laughs> we, so we had to sit down like school kids and just write it out. And I was eight of them and four of them, and I'll stop, you know. And then, um, so we did it, yeah. I don't even think we did it right on the night, actually. <laughs> and we just blagged through it. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. So that was uh, a great experience to Yeah, it was lovely to do it. That. Great to do it. Love it. Yeah, man. Great, great thing to do, yeah. Brilliant. And then, and then obviously, recently, um, mm. <coughs> your, uh, your book's come out. Uh, one of well, yeah. One of the shocks. And uh, I've seen that it's had great reviews. I, I've got mm. to admit to not uh, re reading mm. myself yet. Uh, but um, semi-autobiographical. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's about my childhood and, and school days and early days in in punk rock in, scene, in, in, in the a scene, fictitious yeah. band, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, I must read. I think uh, oh, I yeah. must read it. You've got mine now. So yes, I, I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so you, that was uh, how long did it take you to write that book? Well, I think about four years. Right. Yeah, it's it's, it's not an easy thing to do. No. Uh, but it's a great thing to have done and um, and been well received yeah yeah it was really well received when it came out it got some great reviews in like GQ and Fantastic. other other things and um, yeah for a small publisher to even yeah. get GQ, GQ to notice yeah yeah and, uh, yeah no it's, uh, I'm sure there's some other fans out there who've read it and yeah. uh, if not get it because uh, you know Dad might want to do golf soon so. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. bathroom needs doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Rich, so what, what is what is the name of the book? Mud sharks. Mud, Mud sharks. sharks. Yeah, yeah. We were we were chatting earlier yes. before this uh, this uh, session, and uh, you strike me as a very modest, down to earth guy, mm. and but we were sort of talking off camera, uh, and you were sort of telling us some of the amusing stories that you said. Oh, I've done. I, I d yeah. Oh. You, he cool. said, "I don't, want, I don't want to share these. I've got photos, and I was sort of, I was wondering, you know, it's going to come across that you're a genuine guy." Yeah. Um, so, but a bit I'd, of a wanker, really. <laughs> no, no, no. Where you go with this, Rich? I don't yeah. have to edit anything. Yeah. No, no, no. What, what it is is that sort of like you're talking about sort of like you obviously, as a as a professional musician and session drummer, you've met a lot of people, sure. you know a lot of people, you've, had, you've got a lot of stories, you've got a lot of photos mm -hmm. that you're quite happy to sit on because mm -hmm. you're, you're a modest guy. Sure. But for the rest of us, 
Yeah. It's like gold, you know. And I think if you did a book, mm-hmm. I think your personality would come across mm-hmm. that you are not. You're not doing this uh, to say, "Hey, look, look how great I am." You're just putting a book out saying, "Look, I'd like to share you." Share a book this of with stories. You because, yeah, because right. because the thing is, in the reality is, mm. if you don't put this down on mm. paper and share those photos, mm. then yeah, your immediate family, your kids, mm. you know, are going to get it. But the rest of the world, those stories are going to go. Well, maybe, maybe and, and I, I think it would be a loss to the world if yeah. you didn't share these these sort of anecdotes, <laughs> yeah, these stories, these right. photos. Well, the thing is, you, at the beginning of your question, you said, oh, I'm a musician. I, that's what I do. I make music. My, that's that's the part of me that I give to everyone, is yeah. the music. Not his stories. And plus the fact that you have <laughs> permission off the other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see yeah. any... <laughs> what, so you've been called? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But following up from that, yeah. are there any stories that, stories. Could, that you ah. could feel, feel well, but well, not really. I mean, not, I, I don't walk around with anecdotes. I mean, no, there's some come out, like I said, about the, the, the hotel okay, thing. I think yeah, we, yeah. I think we can but, but I don't, that. Uh, it, 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 I don't keep yeah. it in front of my brain, you know. I think we can c- conclude that part here. Uh, but uh, if people want to ask you about your stories after we shut the cameras off, then. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, so it's now, uh, yeah. now and next. You've got another book finished. Well, yeah, yeah. That's uh, which is a novel fiction. A novel, yeah, with no symbol stands in it. It's called <laughs> Community of Strangers. It's a okay. tale of moral judgments, intrigue, sex, violence, families, birth, death, and was so really, not really difficult to do. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, and no, I'm still playing. I play for uh, Roland. Gitt. Yeah, um, you'll be to, you'll be touring um, with Roland in December yeah. and uh, around England. And also, I play for You the Living, which is a band I just recorded with. That's a lot of fun. Evokes a lot of that early punk. Oh, so so they are a punk punk influenced band. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Even though they're only about eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, you're old enough to be all of those granddad, almost. Easily. <laughs> easily. I drive them all home after. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, folks, um, I think it's been a great pleasure and honour to uh, spend uh, half an hour or so with uh, Dave Barbarossa. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and also uh, our record coming out uh, next spring, isn't it, Dave? Yes, and, it is. Yeah. It is. Yes. Okay. Well, fingers crossed that I can you know, mix it right. But yeah. anyway. Cheers, Dave Barbarossa, everybody.